especially with today's theme of the sky is not the limit. And I just love that phrase. I love that phrase because it reminds us that we truly can achieve just about anything we set our minds to. You know, and our, uh, us as educators, we want to share that message with you, our students, because we do believe it. We believe that you can accomplish anything that you set your mind to when you know that the sky is not the limit. But guess what? We also know that challenges and obstacles happen in life. Difficulty comes up, unexpected things happen. So what do you do when that proverbial sky just like dumps all over you? What happens when you're reaching for the sky and you can't even get your feet off the ground? What happens when you can't see the sun because there's so many clouds in the way? It happens, it happens to very successful people all the time. Roadblocks, obstacles, you know, uh, tragedy happens, life happens to us. And during these challenging times, um, it's, it's easy to feel all alone. It's easy to feel like no one else understands what we're going through. We uh, look at other people and, and compare ourselves and say, you know, gosh, they have it all together. It's, it's easy to think that those obstacles are insurmountable. How many of you have ever felt like that? I know I have, <laughs> for sure. And it's overwhelming. It can be overwhelming. So how do you reach for the sky when you don't even have an umbrella to keep off the rain? How do you go through that storm and then achieve the sky is not the limit? I want to share with you today that I've been through that storm more times than I'd like to count. Um, but I will also share with you there are, that there's very te there's tenants, and despite the challenges, there's things that you can do in order to reach your goals. Something that has stuck with me is this notion of positivity and joy, even during challenging times. People will say to me often, you know, you, you're always smiling, you always seem so happy, you have a smile on your face, um, you must have it pretty good. And I will say that um, I am happy. I enjoy smiling, I enjoy life. Life is too short to not be happy. But that doesn't mean that, it ha that it's been easy. Despite challenges in life, I choose happiness but it also can be difficult to overcome those obstacles. I want to share with you today that I discovered at a young age some very important things that I've done in my life that you can do in yours to overcome those obstacles. And that is that it's important to find your faith. And when I say faith, I don't necessarily mean a religious faith, although that's important as well. But it's that faith that's based on hope. It's based on inner strength. It's based on joy and optimism. It's based on a positive attitude and the belief that things can and will get better when you're going through difficult times. The faith you do have is a foundation. The faith that you do have will help you find joy and positivity. And the faith that you have is that inner strength to use in times of despair. Faith and hope have helped me understand that circumstances and obstacles do not, do not dictate happiness and joy. And I think that's really important for you um, as young folks to understand as well, is that sometimes you come up on circumstances and feel like that's, that's it, that's all, you know, that's all there is. But those circumstances don't have to dictate your joy and happiness. It takes hard work. It takes practice. I have to practice every day when I wake up to choose joy and to choose happiness. Sometimes every minute of every day, especially working with teenagers. So when I lose my temper with you, sorry, I'm still joyful, um, but I'm also human. Um, Martin Luther King Jr., somebody who's a personal hero of mine, he lived a very tragic life, but he never lost his faith. And one quote that has stuck with me is he said so eloquently that faith is taking the first step even when you can't see the staircase. So have faith when you move that step forward to your future. 
My own challenges did begin early in life. I was just a little bit younger than most of you. I was in junior high school when my father died very suddenly and tragically of a brain aneurysm. Now my father was my hero. He was my youth soccer coach and he was such a great father to myself and my four siblings. So I was devastated. Uh, but over time, I turned that grief into honoring my father. And I realized that he had set an example. He loved life. He laughed and he lived for his family. So instead of choosing grief over a long period of time, I chose to honor my father by also loving life and living life to his fullest, its fullest. Just a few years after my father passed, or my father passed away, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. Eight months after her diagnosis, she passed away. So here I was, a young adult without a mother or father, because so I had to find a place to live, find a job, and finish college, all without my mom or dad. And again, at that time, my friends would say, boy, I'd be pretty angry and pretty bitter, and I think people would understand if I was. And I know maybe some of you have gone through something, and, and it's hard not to feel angry. Like, why me? You know, why me? Why did that happen to me? But I also found that inner faith and that hope that instead of taking that anger, I took that faith and honored my mother through, um, through enhancing my own future and her memory by showing kindness and living with a purpose. So a few years after that, I was got married and my husband and I decided we are going to be entrepreneurs. How many of you would like to be an entrepreneur in your life? Some of you. So we were a small construction company and we were on top of the world. We'd just been uh, given a uh, rather large job and we knew that the sky was not the limit. This was our chance. But then life happened and unfortunately everything that could go wrong with that job went wrong and we lost everything and again there was another challenge in life where do we go from here now what do we do and i was fortunate that i was able to talk to some business mentors and i realized that this too would pass we would get through this and we would continue to have an, and a wonderful future and that's one thing, a piece of advice to have is turn, you can turn things that don't go quite the way you had planned them into optimism and hope. Because despite setbacks in our lives, and we will all have them, it's so important to keep envisioning your future and to keep that faith and be optimistic. Another uh, person I admire, Nelson Mandela, he endured horrific treatment throughout his life. My own life experience is pale in comparison to his. But one thing that he said is he said, part of being optimistic is keeping your face pointed toward the sun and your feet moving forward. He said that even in his darkest moments when he had thought he lost faith in humanity, he never gave up, into, gave up or gave into despair. And those are words that I really appreciate and that I uh, try to live by. So after that setback, we focused, refocused on the future, and that included having children. But there's that obstacle again, and life happened again, and unfortunately I experienced loss through two miscarriages. During that time, we also lost my mother-in-law at a young age, and very sadly, I lost my younger brother to cancer. He was also very young and left behind a young son. My closest cousin died of cancer during that time. And she was the one who really encouraged me to get into education after our, our business loss. The other thing I found out when my cousin died is that our family is the carrier of a cancer gene that causes quite a risk of several um, severe cancers. Now, again, this I got tested, and as luck would have it, I'm positive I'm a carrier of that gene. And I could live with that anxiety, or I could choose to live life, and live life to its fullest. So that is an anxiety that I choose not to have, because I don't know what will happen. I can't, I can't control that. 
So although over the next few years we you know, experienced a few more hurdles here and there, loss of jobs and home, some health challenges, we were eventually able to start a family, both through adoption and birth. And I will tell you that being a parent and a grandparent now has brought me the most joy I could ever imagine. Um, but it also <laughs> brings with it certain challenges, which I'm sure your parents would probably agree as well, that children can be challenging every now and then. And our family uh, was brought together as a unique mixed race family. Um, some would argue probably a mixed up family, but that's a story for a whole different time. Um, but I was there when my family experienced incidences of hate and racism and homophobia. And it was really, really hard to support my family when they were going through so much, but always, always we fell back on that knowledge that we knew that things would get better, that there was happiness and joy in life, even when others chose to exhibit hatred. Just over the last few years, we had some additional misfortune. We have been endured some mental wellness challenges, uh, drug addiction, prison time, and very unfortunately several devastating car accidents, including one uh, that took the life of a young lady. Now all of that is pretty heavy stuff. Um, I'm gonna stop there because I know others have experienced even much more difficulty in their lives than I have. But I know this, I know that I am lucky to be here and I have had an incredible life despite all of those challenges. There's a quote from um, Kara Chamberlain. She's a young lady. Uh, she was young, I think not much older than, than you all, and she was abducted and tortured at the hands of her kidnapper. But she said this in a very wise way. She said, we all experience hard things, but we get to decide where we go from here. And I love those words because again, we are in charge of where we can go from here you can overcome challenges when the sky is not the limit. So hopefully you kind of heard a few snippets today um, about some things you can do, but I know one of the most important is to continue to focus on the positive. Even if it's little things, you will have things that will devastate you, tragedies in your life. But think about the really, truly good things, a good friend, a cup of coffee, chocolate, it's always my favorite. But despite the, the death of both of my parents, I'm surrounded by amazing family and friends. Despite financial hardship early on, I've had a wonderful career the last several decades in education. You know, despite health challenges, I'm alive and well and standing here today. So don't give up. Even when you're faced with adversity, keep focusing on the positive. The other thing that's really important, especially for young people, and it's so hard, is not to compare yourself to others. I know with social media and everything out there, it's easy to look at what everybody else is posting or saying and think that others have it so much better. But I will tell you, they probably don't. They're probably going through something too, just like you are. Teddy Roosevelt summed it up, I think, very best when he said, comparison is the thief of joy. When we compare ourselves to others, it takes away a little bit of our heart. Know that you are not alone. You are never alone. There's always someone going through something that you can confide in and talk to. Uh, another really important thing is to choose your attitude. Choosing a positive attitude helped me in my life and can help you in yours. I do choose happiness every day. Even on my grumpiest days, I try to be happy. And you too can choose happiness each day. Uh, to paraphrase very roughly, Barack Obama said that when we have challenges, we need to reject pessimism and, and instead push forward with a certain infectious and relentless optimism. I urge you, even in the roughest of times, choose kindness and gratitude. Just a simple thank you to someone can not only make them feel better, but it makes you feel better too. 
kindness is more important than ever, especially given the times that we're living in right now. Did you know that being kind can actually lower your blood pressure and anxiety? I love that. Just something simple for your heart. Each small choice to demonstrate kindness and happiness and joy nurtures our emotional well-being. It doesn't make us immune to bad things happening in our life, but it helps both our mental and physical well-being. And finally, and most importantly, is find your faith. During ta challenging times, know that this too will pass. Know that things will change and life does get better. And then you too can achieve what you thought was beyond your limits. Thank you very much.